So did he explain why to you? Well, again, it came down to other people, it came down to complaints. And, and this is what uh, I find amazing that, again, at this micro level with no longer even free Palestine, just Palestine. This is just the existence of a place now. He said that he'd been receiving numerous complaints and this time he went a step further and he said that he had been threatened with legal action. And I can't understand for the life of me how this can give rise to legal action. How is this an illegal act? And this is why in my statement, in, my, um, what, in what I tweeted out when I called Robbie out on this issue, I called him a coward because it's cowardly in my opinion, to not stand up to such silly, you know, false threats. I even said to him on the day, Loki, that if you get taken to court for this hoodie, I'll cover everything. Because did he say who, But did he say who threatened him with legal action? Well, that's another thing. I asked him about that and I said to him, OK, if you actually got this email, send it to me tomorrow. And he never did. He said he would and he never followed through. But you know what? I don't doubt, in fact, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm also not saying with any certainty that he didn't. He may well have received it, but he never followed through with his commitment to me that he would send it to me. And I said to him, I'll take that on. I'll deal with it. And look, I'm wearing it on my own platform. Surely someone can now take me to court. Does this mean that all of the hundreds of thousands of people that are protesting in the, uh, around England in recent weeks can be taken to court for wearing this? Does this, ha does this threat have any validity of legal action against this? So Very good question. So how did you feel after that? What happened the next day and the weeks ahead? I felt absolutely discriminated against. I, I, re I, didn't know, I didn't really know what to do. I couldn't quite believe it had happened because this was like very overt discrimination as far as I, as far as I saw it. So then we just did the interview. And at the end of the interview, when the record button was stopped and we were back to kind of not being recorded, I said to him in no uncertain terms, the next time I log on for an interview, I don't want to hear any of this nonsense. You should not have even the audacity to tell me what I can and cannot wear. It really angered me. And from that day on, it changed for me with Robbie. I could no longer regard him as a friend. That was it. Wow. And what was his reaction to that? Well, that was it. We went off and next time it didn't come up. And you know what? One thing I feel regretful about actually, you know, is that the next time I didn't wear the hoodie because I honestly felt that uncomfortable. I really felt that uncomfortable. And you know, when I look at that in hindsight, I try and maintain courage and integrity in the way I do. And whilst I call Robbie a coward, in hindsight, I feel embarrassed admitting that to you. I feel like I was a coward because I didn't wear that, because I just thought, I don't want to face this again. And if that's, how it, if that's how that made me feel, and I'm someone that, you know, I'm not a shy and retiring type, I'll fight for what I believe in. And the fact that I don't know whether it was a conscious or subconscious decision not to be wearing that hoodie that day, but I know I felt glad that, oh, I'm not wearing it. I can't even imagine what other people must go through at a mm -hmm. macro level, at a high level, when they're faced with this pressure. Friends don't put you in that situation. 